Hey everybody, it's Eric Beidelman from the Polymer Project. You know, one thing I get asked about a lot is what is the difference between Angular uh, directives and custom elements or web components and Polymer elements? This comes up a lot. You'll see Stack Overflow posts like this. You know, what is the difference between Polymer elements and Angular? And I give a pretty long-winded uh, definition down here. Uh, but there are similarities and there are some differences. And so um, one person, uh, Dave, on our mailing list the other day asked about how do you use Angular inside of a custom element or a Polymer element. And the answer today is we're trying to treat these as two separate worlds. So for example, uh, both Angular and Polymer use very similar binding syntax. They both use the, uh, they have a, their own repeat. Uh, maybe it's not in this example, but they use double, there's one, double mustaches for variable uh, replacement. And so if you try to mix and match both those worlds, it'd be a little confusing for both Angular and Polymer. So if you're building a Polymer element, you know, stick in Polymer, everything inside of it is using Polymer stuff. Uh, but then from the outside, you can use Angular to data bind to that element. Everything is just on, everything's just an element. So if you treat it very concise and very compartmentalized into a component, uh, then everything will be hunky-dory. So one right, really nice thing, too, is that the Angular team has said, hey, you know, we're already very close to uh, conceptually, you know, being able to create custom elements. And so they're going to move to, hopefully in the future, use some of these nice uh, new APIs we're adding to the platform, such as Shadow DOM, custom elements, imports. What I want to do is actually prototype this. What does it look like to have sort of a, a web component or a Polymer element uh, interact with an Angular directive? Um, so this is an example of that. On the top, you have your Polymer web component. And so the markup for this is uh, declared right here. So you can see WC component. It's got a heading attribute. And with inside of it, it's actually got, uh, you're declaring um, your own custom elements for the panels. So a panel has a heading. You, know, you can see this maps to the tab up here. Uh, this has got a heading of code. And when you switch, it basically just uh, selects you know, the new panel, exactly what you'd expect. And these work precisely the same way. What I want to point out here is that the markup is strikingly similar, and I designed it to be such. Um, you know, you're you're literally declaring most of the same things here. The only difference here uh, are the tag names that I've created in Polymer and Angular. But if you look at the code underneath, um, uh, what Polymer has done is shows uh, a more uh, very declarative route. So you implement your Polymer element. You know, the name of the tag is WC Tabs. Uh, the heading is the attribute that I want to be able to bind to, and inside of it, it's all just HTML. So inside of this template. We'll create some shadow down, uh, which is really handy. We'll use a distributed node to sort of tell where the panels were to render. Um, and so it's all basically, you know, just a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, one really cool thing that I've done here is use the mutation observer. So every time I press this button, I'm going to add a tab strip. I can watch for those changes uh, and then render sort of my new tabs on the fly, which is kind of cool. And that's using mutation observer to, to be able to check that stuff and know when my, uh, my, my panels have changed in order to update this sort of internal representation here. So the code for this is actually really similar um, uh, conceptually, but uh, again, the implementation is a bit different. So again, with the Polymer element, it's all declarative with a little bit of JavaScript at the bottom. Creating a directive in Angular is basically just writing a bunch of JavaScript code, and, uh, and they've had to actually implement all this stuff for you because, again, they came before custom elements. So you have to do sort of a little bit more at this point to get um, the final product. But again, the final product is, is very similar um, conceptually and you know, structurally. So even the concepts of data binding are very similar. Uh, in Polymer, you can see I can bind to the heading uh, property that I have set. Now I can also bind in Angular's world. I can use you know, the same mustaches and the same type of thing to bind to that property on the outside. So when this guy gets changed anywhere in my app, or this guy gets changed, um, the respective components are going to update that accordingly. Inside of my index.html, you can see what I have is a app.css and a tabs.css. And then below it, I'm importing those two web components, those Polymer elements. Now, inside of app.css, this is what you'd expect. This is global styles from my application. I'm you know, using Flexbox here. Uh, I can use selectors to get at each of those specific custom element tags, style those with you know, 650 pixels width, inline block, all that good stuff, give them a gradient. And so that's styling from the outside. Um, it's worth noting that, again, these tab strips are uh, very similar, and they actually do share the same tabs.css style sheet. So you can see that I have an active state here for my H2. As I click these, these become bolded. That's where that's coming from. Now what's cool about Shadow DOM is that we have a cap encapsulation both outside and inside. So again, 
uh, if I drive in here and actually see what's going on in my uh, web component here, my Polymer element, you can see that what I have right now is um, I'm able to apply author styles. And what apply author styles does is say it's okay for styles from the outside to bleed into my component. So when that's true, I refresh the page, everything looks as you'd expect because what's happening is the selectors defined in tabs CSS are able to then uh, target elements with inside of my shadow DOM. And so that's what's giving it the style. If I turn this off, and, and which is the default, apply author styles is, is false, when I refresh the page, you see that those styles aren't being applied anymore. So the same selectors aren't uh, able to bleed inside of my shadow DOM. So we're kind of starting over. Instead, what I can do is I can utilize you know, Shadow DOM and encapsulation and uh, just bring in that link style sheet directly into my web component. So now I'm back where I'm at. My styles are encapsulated inside of this component. Another cool thing I can do is actually rip out a lot of this logic. So if I wanted to, um, I could take out the W3C tabs uh, selector here and copy this over then into my, uh, my custom element style sheet. And so what this is going to do is allow us to give some of these default behaviors directly on the element itself, uh, and it's again scope to that element. So again, if I refresh, everything is hunky-dory. Just to prove you if I take that out, that should no longer be styled appropriately because we've taken that selector out. So we can style the host element, we can have style protection, uh, and scope styles via uh, just a link tag inside of our problem. Element. That's really, really cool. So the last thing I want to show you guys is how to write an Angular app or an Angular directive that talks to a web component or a Polymer element. And so what we said before is that it's very hard in today's world um, to use Angular inside of a Polymer element. And that's because, again, they use similar binding syntaxes. And Angular doesn't know about Shadow DOM. So its compiler and its processor can't actually traverse into the Shadow DOM and do its thing. However, the reverse is doable today. You can write an Angular app that talks to a web component and uses data binding to change its values and properties. And I want to show you that right now. So same thing as I had before, I have my web component version of the tab strip here. It's got the heading property and it's got a hard-coded value here. Instead what we can do is, since this thing is uh, I've declared as an Angular app, this ng app write directive um, that's activating Angular's compiler across the board, uh, I've also included an input which has got an ng model and so that's using a heading property, a heading name, to be its data model. And what we can do is we can actually use Angular's data binding, so it's double mustache, and bind this heading attribute of this web component, this custom element, to this name, this data model, this heading. And so that's going to link these two together. And we can actually do the same thing here if we wanted to, right? We can data bind the Angular directive using Angular's data binding. And so when I change this heading, both of these headings are going to update thanks to Angular's data binding. So just to go to show you, we'll refresh this. And when I say declarative, for the win, you can see in both places it's changing. That markup at the top here is changing, which is the web component, and at the bottom here, which is the Angular directive. And so the reason this is possible is because uh, in Polymer Elements of Web Components, everything is DOM. If you treat it as a compartmentalized component, it doesn't matter how things are implemented inside. It only matters at how you use it on the outside. So in this case, right, the web component has this headings attribute that we can data bind to because we'd be told uh, our web component, our WC tabs, that we want to publish this property to have people sort of toggle that. And then when it gets updated inside this element, we're using Polymer's data binding inside. Again, totally separate world, but that's okay because everything is done and what's inside of it doesn't really matter. So using Angular and web components today in Polymer element, elements is very possible. Uh, again, the other way is uh, forthcoming as soon as Angular understands Shadow DOM, but this is super exciting because you can write apps that are compartmentalized, talk to each other. Implementation is totally hidden away from the user, it doesn't matter, uh, but you can use sort of the common techniques and practices you've always been using.